Okay, 6.2 lesson, here we go. Okay, let's start here. This will come up again. Um, what is the value of the car after 10 years? So we are just looking to put a 10 in there. Use your calculator. Also, depreciation, that's gonna come from here. This would have been 1 minus 0.12. That's where that came from. So that means the depreciation rate is 12%. Number of bees in a hive growing exponentially at a rate of 40% per day. The hive begins with 25 bees. Write a, write a model that's going to model that. You're going to have uh, number of bees after time t. So your amount after time t is equal to initial value is 25. We're growing by 40%. That's 1.4 raised to the t. There's your equation. Today we're going to work on uh, solving... Um, solving for uh, exponent exponential solving for the variable exponents geez spit it out here's the thing we did a problem like this in chapter 5 it was a challenge problem we want to match up the bases so I want to I want to figure out how can I make 9 into into uh, a base of 3 so I get 3 to the x equals remember you raise a power to a power you multiply and now you can drop the bases and solve. Same thing over here. This is 4 cubed all to the third. So we want to get the bases to be the same. 4 to the ninth, x equals 9. Take it up a notch. Now I've got 2 to the 5x. And I'm going to change 2 to 2 squared, 2x minus 1. Very important that you understand that you need to multiply those. Multiply those. 2 to the 5x equals 2 to the 4x minus 2. 5x equals 4x minus 2 minus 4x minus 4x. x is negative 2. Over here, again, I got 9, so that's 3 squared. To the 5x minus 4. Again, distribute. 3 to the 2x equals 3 to the 10x minus 8. 2x equals 10x minus 8. So once you get the bases to be the same, drop them and go with it. Move this over, negative 8x is negative 8, x is 1. Inequalities are going to be done the same way. You've got to watch out if you multiply or divide by a negative, you've got to flip the sign. Uh, 625, holy cow, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, 5, five to the 1 is, or 5 squared is 25, 5 cubed is 125. 5 to the 4th is 625. So you can actually write this as 1 over 5 to the 4th. And then I can bring it up and make it 5 to the negative 4th. So really, my problem that I'm working is this. So you want to, if you have a denominator you need to deal with, that's how you deal with it. 3, mi three minus 2x is greater than negative 4. Now you got to watch out. I'm going to end up dividing by a negative here, aren't I? And I get negative 7. And divide by a negative and divide by a negative. You got to flip the sign. X is less than 7 over 2 or 3.5. 243, figure out what that is. Um, I think it's uh, 3 to the 5th. You might need your calculator for that. Just test it out. So if this is 1 over 3 to the 5th, that means it's 3 to the negative 5. Bring it up. 3 to the 4 minus 3x is greater than 3 to the negative 5. I'm going to set these. And now, I got, again, i got to watch out. i got to watch out for dividing by a negative. And i got to flip that sign. x is less than 3. Okay, change of pace. Y equals A times B to the X. Remember, the initial value for any of these, the initial value is always going to be at 0, A. So this is A, this is A, and then this is another point, X, Y. So I'm going to plug A in here, X in here, Y in here, and we're going to solve. 56 equals 7 times b to the third. Divide by 7, divide by 7. 8 equals b to the third. 
you can cube root both sides, or you can recognize that this is two cubed, and it's B is going to be two. But I prefer to raise to the power of one third. Okay, we did that a little bit last chapter. B is two, but they want me to write the equation, so I got to go back and go y equals seven times two to the x. There's your answer. Again, this is x, this is y, this is a. Three over two equals six times b to the one. Well, b to the one, that's really nothing. Divide by six, divide by six. Ooh, I don't like dividing by six, so it's the same as multiplying by one-sixth, right? Um, so you're going to end up with uh, one-fourth equals b. And then you write it as y equals 6 times 1 fourth to the x. So this is actually an exponential growth problem. This is an exponential decay equation, and you can tell that just by doing it. Uh, you've got to do this on your calculator. Go ahead. Okay, in 2010, we had a population here. By 2015, it was here. So how many years is it from 2010 to 2015? So it says, notice it says we are going to write x in terms of number of years since 2010. So really you're talking about year zero was 1,445,632. And then uh, the other year is year five is 1563025. So you're going to do these problems the same way. We're going to build an equation, and I'm going to, this is going to be my value of a. In fact, we often do this with population. We say the population at time t is equal to the initial population times 1 plus r to the t. Now, this is exactly the same as y equals a times b to the x. So we can solve this the same way. So I put my 1, 4, 4. Uh, well, wait, wait a second here. Wait a second here. We got to write it the right way. I went too far over. Okay, so we're going to go, um, we're going to go with the population after time 5. We're going to put this guy, 1563025, is equal to initial population times B, or that 1 minus R to the t, and t is 5. So 5 years, that's the x. This is the end result. This is the initial value. So I'm going to divide by that big number. I'm going to get my calculator, and I'm going to do 1, 5, 6, 3, 0, 2, 5, divided by 1, 4, 4, 5, 6, 3, 2. And I'm going to take that, that I got 1.0812 is equal to b to the fifth. So I'm going to raise that number to the power of one-fifth. So I'm going to raise that number to the power of one-fifth. And I get, I get my b is 1.0157. Okay, so my growth rate, I could read this as the growth rate from the r. That should have been plus. This is 1.57%. So my equation is y equals 1, 4, 4, 5, 6, 3, 2 times 1.0157 raised to the t. 2025, that means I'm going to put in a t equals 25. I will use my calculator again, 1, 4, 4, 5, 6, 3, 2 times. I'm just going to use the answer that's in my calculator, raised to the 25, and I get approximately... 2,135,987. That's the population in 2025. Same thing here. Again, right in terms of population since 2000. So this is going to be my year zero is 9,426. Seven years later, year seven is 17,942. And we can do the same thing. So I would write... Again, y equals a times b to the x, or population at time t equals the initial population times 1 plus r to the t. It's the same equation. So I get the 17942 equals 9426 times b, or the 1 plus r to the 7th. I divide this over. Again, calculator problem, 17942 divided by 9426. And I get 1.903 equals b to the seventh. I'll take that answer, raise it to the power of one seventh. 
That's how we undo that. And I get B equals, so I'm going to the 1 7th and to the 1 7th. And I get B equals 1.096. That means this, this place is increasing by 9.6%. That's astronomical. So my equation is Y equals 9.9400, not point. 26 times 1.096 raised to the T. This would be T equals 12. Plug it in there, answer the question. Ryan's consulting firm began with 23 clients. That it's time zero, we had 23 clients. After seven years, we had 393 clients. Write an, X, write an, write an equation for his growth. So I have 393 equals 23 times B to the seventh. Again, this is A, this is X, this is Y. Divide by 23, divide by 23. 393 divided by 23, 17.087 equals B to the seventh. Raise both sides to the 1 seventh, and I get B is 1.5. So I have y equals a times 1.5 to the t. After 15 years, plug it in, times 1.5 to the 15th, and um, <coughs> excuse me, 23 times 1.5 to the 15th. He should expect to have 10,071 clients. Is that realistic? I don't think so. So this would be a case where Really, he went up nicely, but for, a, for, a, for, a, for a, a business like this, there will be a maximum sustainable population, so it should, so it should level off. So if this is his 23 and this is his 393, maybe he levels off at 500, right? Does that make sense? So this is, this is using the model, but we probably outgrew the model. Okay, last thing for today. Got to do the compound interest formula. I'd like you to notice that this is basically the same thing as y equals a times b to the x, except this whole thing is the b. So now what we're going to do is instead of getting our interest a little bit at a time, or once a year, we're going to get it more than once a year. So we have to adjust this n. That's the number of compounding. So if we compound quarterly, that means quarterly will be n equals 4, that's quarterly. And then if it's monthly, n equals 12, monthly. If they say twice a year, then your n is 2. So you just have an extra little piece there. So my r is 0 0.054, we're compounding quarterly, n is 4. The initial value is, that's the p, that's called the principal, is 4,000. And I want to know what is the balance after eight years, t equals eight. So the amount after eight years is equal to the principal times one plus the rate divided by four, all to the four times eight. Because if I'm, if I'm having this go over eight years, four times a year over eight years, that's four times eight, that's 32 compoundings. And we're splitting that interest rate up into four equal four equal groups. Compounded interest is better than annual interest. I type this into the calculator just the way I see it and raise it to the, you can do 32 or you can do four times eight, it's up to you. So after eight years that $4,000 has grown to $6,143.56. Same thing here. I got a rate of 0 0.046. I have compounded quarterly. Again, n equals 4. The initial value principal is 6,050. And we want to know after 6 years. So I'm going to do uh, the amount after 6 years is equal to the initial investment times 1 plus the rate divided up into 4 equal segments. And then we got 4 times 6 or 24 up top. Plug it and chug it and we're good. Oops. I got a I got a parenthesis issue here. What happened?
I got 7,960.43. So the $6,050 grew to 7,960. Alex invested $1,200 um, interest rate compounded monthly. N is 12, okay? So now I've got my amount after seven years is equal to initial investment times one plus 0 .053 divided by 12, raised to the 12 times seven. Plug it in, 1,200 times, holy cow, one plus 0 0.053 divided by 12, tough time here, divided by 12, all raised to the 12 times 7, $1,737.60. There we go. Uh, that's not the right homework, so make sure you check the, maybe it is the right homework. Better double check it.